dear Matthew, Paul, Debora, or Teacher Anne, Teacher Anne, do you hear me? Hello, Teacher Anne. How are you? Welcome. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Okay, the class for today is science, right? That is the class. Yes, biology, science. Biology, science. Okay, very good. Okay, Abby, do you hear me, Matthew? Paul? Do you hear me? Welcome, guys. The class is going to start in a couple of minutes, okay? Actually, yes, in a couple of minutes. Um, we have to wait uh, for um, more students, and you can start, teacher, okay? Okay, no problem. Let's. Uh, I will start in a minute. Yeah, uh, two more minutes and yeah, two more minutes. You can start. Yes, thank you. Okay, guys. Um, when teacher is starting um uh, in the class, it. Good morning, Professor Anang. Good morning, guys. And good morning, everyone. Okay. Good morning. Uh, so, good morning. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I would this in the start. Okay. So Thank we you. are starting. Uh, you're welcome. We are starting today's lecture. And uh, let me share uh, the screen. Yeah. One moment, please. He's ready. Is ready, prof uh, uh, Professor. <clears throat> okay, so uh, today's lecture uh, is the second lecture in the biology series, and uh, we will try to cover uh, three topics today. Uh, the first one is enzymes, the second one is uh, cell membranes and transport, and the third one is uh, nucleic acids and uh, protein synthesis. So um, let us talk, start the chapter uh, enzymes. So uh, you guys may have heard uh, a bit about uh, enzymes before I expect. Uh, do you have any idea, anyone, that what actually enzymes are? You guys can raise your hand or you can reply in chat or you can uh, ask for permission and you can um, reply uh, verbally as well with your mic. Anyone, what is what what are enzymes? Do you have any idea? If, if, I, am, if I am good, uh, are uh, protein that produce a chemical change? in the body. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, <clears throat> somehow they, they, they do that. Okay, so let us see what actually enzymes are. So enzyme is uh, a biological catalyst, okay? <clears throat> so what is basically a catalyst? Catalyst is anything which speeds up, which speeds up, which speeds up your reaction. Uh, catalyst, like we say that cat, uh, something is being catalyzed, so so something is being speed up. Okay, so for example, if you want to uh, travel uh, between point A and B, so there can be uh, like many uh, different uh, things that you can try. Like you can walk, 
uh, between the two points or between the two places, you can take a bike. So a motorbike will increase uh, the speed that it, it will help you to reach point B uh, more quickly, okay? Or, or you can take a car, or if the distance is far, you can take an aeroplane. So uh, the, 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 the more you go higher, uh, the more like quickly you are reaching to the point B, okay? So similarly, uh, enzymes work in our bodies and they catalyze chemical reactions. So otherwise uh, they would take many days or sometimes months or years to complete. So uh, enzymes uh, catalyze chemical reactions and they enable them to complete uh, more quickly. Is it clear? Okay, so, okay, thank you. So let's proceed and uh, let us look at what enzymes are uh, made of. So in our last lecture, we talked about the biological molecules uh, that we have different types of uh, molecules uh, in our body, uh, but uh, the four main types are uh, like carbohydrates, fats, lipids, and proteins. So most of our body is composed of these four biological uh, molecules. So let me write it again for you guys. So we have carbohydrates, we have proteins and the third one is we have uh, lipids and the fourth one is a kind of fats okay so enzymes are made up of proteins and enzymes are globular proteins so what do we mean by globular uh, just like a globe okay so this is uh, this represents a globular shape, okay, like a globe. So enzymes are made up of proteins and what do they do? They catalyze biochemical or biological reactions in living things. So just like I said, almost all metabolic reactions which take place in living organisms are catalyzed by enzymes. You guys uh, should know what catalyze uh, mean. Uh, enzymes are therefore essential for life. Without uh, enzymes, life is impossible, okay? We cannot imagine life without uh, enzymes. Otherwise, the reactions that we need uh, would take years to complete, and we cannot uh, wait that long. So many enzymes, uh, so the fourth point uh, in enzymes is that many enzymes, names and in A's, A-S-E, okay? So for example, amylase. So how do you know that this is an enzyme? Because this word is ending in A-S-E. And the uh, another example of uh, the name of an enzyme is ATPase. Okay, so how do you know that this is the name of an enzyme? Because it is ending in A-S-E. Well, that cannot be uh, the case in the 100% of the times, but it will uh, be this way in uh, more than 90% of the cases. So this is a good way to recognize uh, the name of an enzyme on your paper. So I have uh, uh, um, a question for you. So which of the following molecules is an enzyme? A, hemoglobin, a B, a cellulase, C, monosaccharide, and D, uh, fructose, anyone? I think it's B. B. Uh, excellent, oh. Isa, excellent, you good. So uh, how, how, how did you uh, get that? Because it's A, F. Yes, right. So because uh, it is ending with A, S, E. So that's how you uh, recognize that cellulase must be uh, an enzyme. Okay, excellent. Yeah, that's the correct answer. Okay, so uh, let's proceed and let us uh, discuss more about enzymes and uh, let's see how do they work? How do actually they speed up uh, a biochemical reaction or a biological reaction uh, within our bodies? So uh, for, for example, I have uh, added this picture of a charcoal here. And uh, like you, most of you guys may have, must have prepared a barbecue with your families. And uh, this uh, piece of charcoal will, will not burn um, 
if it is like uh, stored in a container or it is uh, yeah, like mm, like kept outside in open air. So if you have a piece of charcoal on your hand, will it burn just by itself? No, no, it no, needs it, a, a little piece of fire, but to burn. Yes, yes, excellent. Yes, so it needs heat. It needs energy, right? So it needs energy so that it can start burning. So that energy is called activation energy. And that is the case with uh, everything uh, within our bodies and uh, in, the, in chemistry. So everything has an activation energy. And by, acti by achieving that activation energy, it starts uh, reacting. And before, uh, below that activation energy, it does not react. So this is the example of a charcoal that you need to heat it up before it starts burning and starts reacting with oxygen. So coal is basically carbon and it burns in the presence of oxygen and it produces carbon dioxide and water, okay? So you need heat so that it, it starts burning. So this energy is called activation energy and activation energy can be uh, defined as the minimum amount of energy required uh, to uh, perform a reaction or to start a reaction. So we have two graphs here. And uh, in the first one in graph A, you, this is here you can see that uh, this arrow is, this scale is indicating energy and this scale is uh, representing the progress of a reaction. So this reaction is without an enzyme, and you can see that such a huge amount of activation energy is required before uh, the reactant can be turned into uh, products, okay? So uh, to change a substrate, or the reactant is also called a substrate. So substrate is anything on which uh, an enzyme uh, acts, so that, that, that thing is called a substrate, okay? So to change a substrate into a product, the energy of the substrate must be briefly raised by an amount known as the activation energy. This can be done by heating the substrate. So what actually enzyme does is that it chemically reduces this activation energy. So here in, in picture B, you can see that the amount of the activation energy has been decreased as compared to uh, this, uh, this portion, okay? So enzyme does not heat, literally heats up uh, the, 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 the compound or the substrate that it is reacting on inside our bodies, but somehow it uh, chemically lowers the activation energy uh, and it turns it into products more quickly, okay? So this is how the enzymes work. Uh, how do they work? They work by lowering the activation energy of the substrate. So uh, is it clear so far? Any question? No, it's clear for me. Okay, okay, so, so let's proceed. Okay, so now we will see that how actually enzyme uh, recognizes the substrate uh, and convert it into products. So we have two, uh, basically two theories, uh, two, two theories uh, regarding uh, the, the mode of action of enzymes. So how do enzymes work? So we have lock and key model hypothesis. And the second uh, hypothesis is induced fit. So we have these two types of theories. So this one, the second one is uh, con considered a more fit and a more relevant uh, with the uh, today's uh, research. And this one is an old uh, model, old theory, but we will discuss it anyway, because this is included in your syllabus. Okay, so lock and key model. So just like a specialized key uh, opens a lock. So similarly, uh, a, spe uh, a, a special substrate can only fit uh, into uh, an enzyme. So lock and key hypothesis, a hypothesis for, an, for enzyme action, the substrate is a complementary shape uh, to the active site of the enzyme and fits exactly into the site. 
the enzyme shows specificity for the substrate. Okay, so you can see here, this is um, a picture of uh, an enzyme molecule, and you can see that it, ha it has uh, like a lock-like structure here inside it, and uh, the, the substrate uh, are resembling the keys. Okay, so this key, which has this round shape, it can fit here, and this another key, which has a flat end, it can fit here, okay? So in our body, like mo molecule, enzyme molecules recognize substrate molecules in a similar way that they have exact structure for each other. And uh, the site and the, po and the position where the keys or the substrate is attached, this is called an active site. Okay, so you can see here that when uh, the, uh, the substrate is attached, so it forms enzyme substrate complex. The substrate is processed, the activation energy gets lowered, and uh, the product is released. And they do keep in mind that during the chemical reactions, the enzymes, they do not get used up. They always stay there after the reaction, okay? So this is how, uh, according to the lock and key model, uh, the enzyme reactions work uh, within our bodies. So another uh, theory uh, that, that is the most relevant and the most correct uh, and relevant for uh, to today's research, that, that is induced fit model. So induced fit model says that the enzyme does not have necessarily to be the exact shape of the substrate, okay? So you see, this is the active site where the substrate can attach. So you can see that the active site is a little bit different uh, uh, in a complementary way uh, than the substrate, sh than the, than the uh, shape of a substrate, right? So what induced fit model says that when a substrate comes closer to the enzyme, the active site is changed. The active site is modified according to the shape of the substrate and uh, it forms an enzyme substrate complex, okay? So in the previous one, we studied that uh, the enzyme uh, is just like a lock and uh, it 100% fits a key. But in this model, we are learning that enzyme can a little bit uh, change its shape according to the substrate, and then the product is formed, okay? So, and this is the most relevant and recent research. And how do scientists uh, uh, like, uh, came up, uh, like came upon this theory that they uh, scanned the molecules, the structures of the molecules inside our body, and the structure of the enzymes that uh, interact with those molecules. So we have a molecule M and we have an enzyme E. So they saw that the structure of this molecule, which was reacting with this enzyme, was not exactly uh, the similar to the active site of this enzyme. So from there, they realized that, okay, uh, whenever the enzyme and uh, uh, the substrate reactions occur, and they somehow they change uh, a shape, okay? Uh, another example of changing a shape of an enzyme would be, this is also called uh, hand in a glove model. Hand in a glove. So I think I have, okay. So whenever you put on a glove, so you, you change, like you move your fingers a little bit and you try to adjust your hand uh, inside the glove, okay? So, so glove, the glove is an enzyme and your hand is a substrate. So hand is also changes its shape a little bit and uh, the glove is also uh, modified a little bit, okay? So this is the main difference between uh, these two uh, theories. So uh, any questions? for enzymes.
Please, um, please, sure, please. It ask. matters. It matters the form of the engine, or not matter what form have the engine for the union for union the substrate and the engine. Sorry, uh, uh, your voice is breaking. I couldn't hear you properly. Uh, could you please type or repeat? I'm gonna type it. For you. Yes, 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 yes. Please, you 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 type it. Matthew, send your question by the chat. Yes, so uh, Matthew, I will wait for your question. You can type. And uh, in the meanwhile, we will uh, proceed. Uh, and when I get your question, I will come back and explain it. Okay, it will save us some time. It's okay. Okay, so, okay, so we are moving on to uh, the next topic, and that is. Uh, cell membranes and, and transport. Okay, so in the last lecture, I explained it to you guys that uh, uh, the simple structure of a cell, that it has a nucleus and it has uh, a nuclear, uh, a cell membrane, okay? So with the help of this cell membrane, things can enter inside the cell and things can exit the cell, okay? Things can come out of the cell and things can get inside the cell. So when something is trying to get inside the cell, it has to cross this cell membrane, okay? And when, and the same is the case with when something is trying to get out of the cell. So cell needs nutrients, energy, molecules to make uh, energy, to make different molecules, to make DNA, to make proteins, so all the, uh, the nutrients, the molecules, they want to get inside the cell, okay? And during uh, the process of uh, uh, making proteins, making DNA, so waste, waste products are created and the waste products are required to uh, get out of the cell, okay? So they need to be remo removed from the cell. So in both cases, they have to cross the cell membrane. So we will discuss the structure of the cell membrane and we will see that how um, the, this transport actually works. Okay, so we have a question here, uh, Matthew. Uh, it matters the shape of the enzyme for joining to the substrate or it don't matter for the union? Well, it does, it does. Enzymes are highly, highly specific and the shape of the enzyme is very important uh, to recognize a specific uh, molecule, okay? So in your, uh, for, to, to answer your question, yes, the shape of the molecule the enzyme uh, is very important. But it will, uh, some, a little bit, there will be a little bit change when it will be attaching uh, with the substrate, okay? But the, the, you can, well, like, the overall structure of the enzyme uh, remains constant. That, that was a very good question, Matthew. Okay. So uh, this is, you can see a picture of uh, uh, a cell wall or a cell membrane. This is uh, the, the side section of a cell wall, a cell membrane, okay? Uh, the, the, the transverse section. I'm showing you uh, a cell wall like this. So we have uh, glycolipids. So these are oil-based molecules. So we are basically discussing the structure of this membrane, okay, the, the outer circle. Let me draw it again so that you can see that what we are talking about. So this red membrane, so this is, so we are discussing the structure of this red colored uh, membrane, okay? So, We have seen that it contains glycolipids, uh, oil-based molecules. We have carbohydrate part of the glycoprotein. We discussed uh, carbohydrates in the previous lecture. And uh, all these uh, brown, round-shaped uh, molecules, they are basically a lipid molecules, phospholipids. Uh, that is why some healthy oils, uh, fats and oils are necessary in our food. 
uh, that make up the uh, cell membrane, okay? Just like you eat uh, meat, um, if, you are, if you guys are not vegetarian, so we can uh, uh, take proteins from uh, vegetables as well. So all these molecules are necessary for making different parts of our bodies. And you can see that you, we have a, a protein molecule here, a glycoprotein here, cholesterol, phospholipid, and transport protein here. So this is a basic structure of a, of a cell membrane. And this layer is called a lipid bilayer, okay? Bilayer. Bi means two, okay? And the same word is used, di. Di also means two. Okay, so this is called a bilayer. So this is the first layer, and this one is the second layer. Okay, so uh, let's proceed and let's look a bit more of the structure. So here you can see that uh, this is the phospholipid bilayer of uh, uh, the cell membrane. So we have hydrophilic head, so what do we mean by hydrophilic? Okay, so hydrophilic can be split up into two words, hydro. What do we mean by hydro, anyone? Aqua, aqua, aqua or aqua, anyone? Matthew? Okay, so hydro means water. Okay, and philic, P-H-I-L-I-C. Philic means loving, okay? So this is a water loving part of the cell membrane and that is on the outside. And on the inside, we have hydrophobic regions. So you can see these tails here. So these are hydrophobic tails. So again, hydro means water and phobic. You may have heard of the word phobia. So phobia means fear. So these molecules, they fear water and they try to stay away uh, from uh, water-based molecules, okay? So we have a hydrophobic tail and a hydrophilic head, and this is a phospholipid bilayer, cholesterol again, some proteins, and, and the polar region, a polar region, uh, is a region that contains a charge, a partial negative or a partial a positive, okay? Just like the poles of the electricity, so we have different poles, right? So in this, this, the same way you can remember that po polar region means uh, negative and positive. So you will remember by this example. Okay, so this is the outer surface of the cell membrane. This is the inner surface of the cell membrane. And uh, the transport happens, the transport happens uh, through these uh, uh, molecules, through these proteins uh, that are called the transport proteins, okay? And uh, like by absorption, by osmosis, by uh, diffusion, we will see uh, th uh, those in a minute, okay? So now that we have discussed the uh, structure of the cell wall uh, of the cell membrane, so now we are gonna see the mechanisms by which the transport takes place, okay? So the first one is di uh, diffusion. So diffusion is net movement of molecules or ions from a region of a higher concentration to a region of lower concentration down a concentration gradient as a result of the random movement of particles. So can, can anyone give me um, a, an example of diffusion, anyone? Have you guys have studied it before? Uh, I don't study that, never. So can you give, okay. Have you studied it or not? I'm sorry, what did you say? Have you studied a diffusion? No, I didn't study it. Okay, okay. So uh, you can, you can uh, do a small experiment um, at home that take a glass of water and uh, put a one drop of ink, okay? Just one drop, fill it with water and put one drop of ink in that glass. So after some time, you will see that all this 
uh, water inside it will uh, the color will change and it will take the shape of uh, the color of the ink okay if you have for example if you have uh, inserted red ink here if you have dropped the red ink so after some time this whole glass will turn slight red okay so why did this happen because of the process of uh, diffusion because the the molecule the the uh, water molecules are in constant motion and uh, they will interact with this red ink and this red ink will be dispersed will be spread across uh, across this glass of water another example of diffusion is like a perfume uh, like if, uh, if you may have, you must have a perfume or air freshener in your home and you can take that perfume and you can spray it in the corner of your room and after some time you will be able to smell it from the uh, other side of the room okay so the the molecules of the perfume they get dispersed in the air okay so what is happening so the molecules from the region of a higher concentration they are going towards the area of a lower concentration and the molecules of the perfumes are being carried away by uh, the air particles inside uh, our room okay this is a, a simple way to understand the, the concept of uh, diffusion is it clear yeah it's all clear okay yes excellent uh, Leonardo, uh, Leonardo gave us an example. Could be when you cook, the smell travels uh, throughout the living room. Excellent. I'm hungry now. Okay, so now we have another uh, mechanism that helps in the transport, and that is a facilitated uh, diffusion. So the facilitate is the facilitated diffusion the diffusion of a substance through a transport protein a channel protein or a carrier protein in a cell membrane the protein provides hydrophilic areas that allow the molecule or ion to pass through the membrane which would otherwise be less permeable to it so here from this point the active uh, diffusion takes place and it requires energy and the particles get uh, out of the cell and, and they also get inside of the cell. And this process is called active and diffusion. So another method or the another uh, process that is required for the transport of uh, through the cell membrane is called osmosis. So these uh, students, these headings are very, very important and you must know these uh, definitions and you should learn them by heart. So osmosis, the net diffusion of water molecules from a region of a higher water potential uh, to a region of a lower water potential to a partially permeable membrane. So osmosis is very much similar to diffusion. And the difference is that it has uh, a membrane in between, OK? So for example, we have lots of students in one small room, okay? So we have uh, like uh, 10 chairs in this room and we have, let's say uh, 17 students. So, and, and here on this side, we have 10 more chairs and only two students. So what, what will the students do? They will try, some of them, they will try to come from this side to this side of the room so that they can have a seat and they can sit down. So here, the number of uh, the students is high. On this side, the number of students is low, but it has uh, extra seats. So, but there is a wall in between and there is a door. So the students will come to this side. So they are using this door to come to this side. During osmosis or during diffusion, we do not have any door, okay? It doesn't matter if we have, a, in diffusion, we do not have any doors. Everything is open in an open area, just like I gave the example of a perfume in a room. So 
uh, it spreads in the air, but in osmosis, uh, we, we, we must have a membrane. This is called a semi semi-permeable membrane. Semi semi-permeable means that it allows some things to, cro uh, to cross and sometimes, or some things are not allowed uh, to cross, okay? For example, only students can exchange through this uh, door and you cannot move chairs. So this is how the um, osmosis work. Okay, so now active transport. So active transport, the movement of molecules or ions through transport uh, proteins across uh, a cell membrane against their concentration gradient using energy uh, ATP. So in and during active transport or the bulk transport, so also the energy is required. So bulk transport, we have two types. The one is endocytosis, and the second type is exocytosis. These are the examples of a bulk transport. Okay. So the bulk movement of liquids, phenocytosis or solids, phagocytosis into the cell by the infolding of the cell surface membrane to form vesicles containing uh, the substance. Endocytosis is an active process requiring ATP. This is the molecule that provides energy, adenine, adenine or adenosine triphosphate. And what is uh, the exocytosis? Exocytosis is the bulk movement of liquids or solids out of the cell. Endo means inside and exo means outside. For example, we have a huge molecule or like a, 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 a bacteria or a bacterium and that, that is in, being engulfed by a cell. So this process is called endocytosis. Something is going inside the cell and exocytosis means getting out of the cells. Exo means out. And endo means in or inside. So I have uh, uh, attached this uh, picture uh, which will elaborate the endocytosis and exocytosis and it will be 100% clear to you guys. Okay, so look here. This is uh, a bacterium that makes us sick, a germ. And this is a special type of cell that eats uh, this bacterium. We, in our, inside our body, we have different types of cells and uh, nature has placed uh, specialized cells that uh, whenever they uh, discover a bacterium in our body, in, in tissues or in muscles, for example, you get a cut a uh, small cut on your skin, your skin gets open and uh, a germ can get inside, a bacteria can enter, a bacterium can enter. So the nature has a, a nature has a defense system. It has specialized cells like this one that these cells, they try to eat that bacterium. So that bacterium is trying to, uh, is getting inside the cell. So what would we call that? Uh, a bacterium entering the cell. Endocytosis or exocytosis? Anyone? A bacterium is trying to get inside uh, the cell. What would you call the process? Um, is, is well trying to um, contaminate the, the body? Yes, it is trying to contaminate, but the cell is not allowing it, but the cell cell will eat it. This cell will eat it. This is like a police. It is, it is catching up the bad guys. So now this cell wants to eat the bacterium. So the bacterium will get inside the cell. So what do we, so what, what is this process called? Is it endocytosis or exocytosis? Endocytosis. How, why, why do you think that it is endocytosis? Because endo means inside, 
bacterium is getting inside the cell, okay? So how, how does the cell uh, engulf or eat this bacterium? You can see that it has created this cleft within it and the bacterium came inside here. Now this end and this end, they will be joined and this end cell will be engulfed. Okay, so this is how uh, the specialized cells that work as a police, they, they catch the bad guys, they catch, catch, catch the bacterium. Okay, bacterium or we can say germs. So this bacterium is uh, broken down. So this cell breaks this bacterium, which was trying to make us sick. And now the waste, the waste is trying to get out of the cell. So again, this cell membrane will have a small opening and the waste will leave the cell. Is it clear? And this process will be called uh, exocytosis. Clear? Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, sorry, I have a micro problem. No, no problem. Do you have a question? Um, no, no, no. Uh, I, at the last time, I was trying to answer you, but my microphone uh, are, are getting fails and I changed Okay, no microphone. problem. Uh, okay, I can hear you properly now, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so, so this was about the transport that how things get inside uh, the cell and how uh, they get out of the cell, okay? So we saw the, the structure of the cell wall, okay? The, uh, and uh, uh, the different types of uh, uh, transport mechanisms that the cell uses to, uh, to exchange materials in and out of the cell. So now we are moving uh, towards uh, our third uh, topic for today. And that is guys uh, very, very uh, exciting. And that is uh, the nucleic acids and the protein synthesis, okay? So, we are all made up of proteins, like uh, like more than 70, 80% of our body is made up of proteins. Uh, the muscles that, that you see, the, the, the muscles, this is protein. This flesh is made up of protein, okay? Uh, the hair, hair are made up of uh, proteins. And each and everything, most of the things inside our bodies, they contain uh, proteins, okay? So our teeth, so uh, they are made up of proteins. So we will see that how DNA uh, makes uh, proteins. So this topic is a little bit in detail. So that is why I kept it um, in the last topic. So we will, uh, let's, let's begin. Okay, so nucleic acids and proteins. So, uh, in uh, my last lecture, I discussed that the cell, uh, the nucleus, it contains the nucleus of the cell. It contains DNA and DNA is a molecule that contains information that uh, what to make inside the cell. Okay, so this is, this is the molecule that controls, that controls everything. For example, you have uh, blue eyes. So, and uh, your parents, your, your mom, your mother also has blue eyes. So how, how do you have the blue eyes? This DNA was transferred from your mom, from your mother's uh, DNA, was transferred to your DNA. And that is why uh, you have blue eyes, just like your mother or just like your dad, okay? So, what is the structure of the DNA? So it has nucleotides. And what is a nucleotide? It, it consists of three parts, a nitrogen containing, containing base. Have you guys heard of acids and bases before? What is an acid and what is a base? Anyone? No, I doesn't. 
Okay. So simply, uh, if I explain a base, it contains uh, a OH group in its formula. And when this OH group is released, so it means that, okay, this is a base. For example, sodium hydroxide, NaOH. So this is a base. So when we will add it into the water, so what will happen? It will split into sodium, Na plus, and OH minus. So this molecule produced this OH. So that is why we call it a base, okay? So base is, so a base is any uh, molecule uh, that produces the OH part. Is it clear now? Yeah, thank you. Okay, and what is an acid? Acid is something that produces hydrogen ions. So, for example, if we say HCl is an acid, so if you, if you mix it in water, what will happen? It will split into H plus and Cl minus chloride and this is called hydronium ion. or simply it is called a proton. So this is an acid, okay? So nucleotides contain nitrogen containing bases and a pentose sugar. Why does it call a pentose sugar, anyone? You guys from um, uh, the United States, right? No, I doesn't. Okay, so what is, a, what is a pentose sugar? You may have heard of the building called Pentagon. It's a famous building in, in the United States. Uh, so a pentose sugar, it is called pent, P-E-N-T, because it has five corners. One, two, three, four, and five. This is why we call it a pentose, a pentose sugar, and a phosphate group, okay? So this is the structure of a nucleotide, and uh, the nucleotides, uh, together with the nitrogenous bases, uh, they form the backbone of the DNA. So this is uh, a DNA molecule. So you can see you have a pentose sugar here, you have a phosphate, you have a pentose sugar, you have a phosphate, and on this side also, you have uh, a pentose sugar, a phosphate, pentose sugar, phosphate, pentose sugar, and a phosphate. And these are the nitrogenous bases, okay? So this is adenine. We represent this with A. And on this side, we have T. So there will always be a pair of A and T. Uh, you should remember this, okay? And then you, we will have cytosine, we have another type of a nitrogenous base, and we have guanine, and we represent it, it with G. So A and T will always make a pair, and G and C will always make a pair, okay? So here, again, we have thymine, T, and here we have adenine, A. So you can see that A is always with T, or T is always in front of A, and G will always be in front of C, or C will always be in front of G, or A will always be in front of T. Yeah, that we, we saw that here in this example. So A, T, T, A, and G, C, or C, G, okay? So in each and every human being, these pairs are uh, similar and they, they make pairs like this, A with T and uh, G with C. 
Okay, so these are the chemical structures here of the adenine and guanine, thymine and cytosine. So you can see this nitrogen in the structure. That is why they are called nitrogenous bases because they, they contain um, nitrogen atoms. Is it clear so far? Yeah, it's all clear. Okay. Okay, so let us uh, move to uh, a very interesting part. So here you can see that the phosphate, this blue portion, is made up of the pentose sugar. And inside this, we have uh, the nitrogenous bases that we just discussed. So again, A is in front of T and C is in front of G, okay? T, A, C, G, G, C, T, A, okay? So I have a question for you guys. T, C, G, A, C, T, A, A. So what should I write here? What will be the complementary for a T? What should come uh, in front of T? I yes, Matthew. C? Uh, no, try again. Um, let me see. T, C, G, C, T, A, A. Um, what will come uh, uh, in front of T? I, I told you in, in the previous slide. Oh, uh, uh, T, A. A, excellent, yes. So this, this side will be A. And what will come here? With the C, the G. Excellent. What will, have, what will we have here, G? Z. C, now. With the A, T. Excellent, yeah, you got it, you got it, excellent. So you can read and predict the, the DNA sequence and that, that, is, that, is, that is just amazing. Okay, so I hope uh, the other students are also um, getting this and uh, this is very interesting and very, very important uh, for uh, the, the latest research that is happening uh, these days. So I want you guys to pay attention and uh, uh, try to learn what I'm trying to uh, teach you guys here. So this, this code, this is a code, right? This is called code. This is called a genetic code, okay? So this is a genetic code. So we were discussing about proteins. So, uh, okay, I think uh, uh, I will have, uh, I need to restart the computer. The, the screen just got blanked. Uh, I will be back, stay tuned. Just give me a minute, I need to restart. Thank you. 
Sorry, student, come back the, the teacher Adam right now. Okay, I apologize. The screen, the screen went blank. Uh, okay, so let me share the, the lecture with you guys. And uh, let's let's proceed. So we were discussing uh, the, the genetic code, the DNA, that how uh, we can represent uh, the, the 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 genetic code. Okay, so I hope you guys can see the screen. Okay, so let us go back to where we were. Okay, so this is uh, a, a genetic code. Let me share another screen uh, to, so that uh, to avoid the problem that we just faced. Okay, so now that you know that A uh, will come with in front of a T and G will be paired with C, right? So now let us look at the structure of the proteins. Uh, Ma'am, can we have uh, 10 more minutes? Continue. Okay, uh, uh, just just five 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 more minutes, five to ten more minutes. Ah, it's okay. Don't worry. It's okay. You can continue. Okay, thank you. So proteins, they are made up of amino acids. And uh, there there are twenty different types of twenty types of amino acids uh, in our bodies. And their structure looks like a polypeptide. So this is one amino acid. It is connected to another one. It will be connected to another one. And different types of proteins have different numbers of uh, these amino acids. So these, these are called amino acids. I am writing AA, amino acid, OK? So this is the first one, this is the second one, this is the third, fourth, fifth, five, six, seven, and eight. So this, this is a protein molecule, okay? So this is uh, a simple structure of a, of, a, of a protein molecule, and it contains uh, a polypeptide. And these are bonds which connects one amino acid to with another one, and they are called uh, disulfide bridges, or these are covalent bonds. Okay. So now, how are proteins synthesized from the DNA? Okay. So we have two types of uh, like um, nucleic acids. One is DNA and the other one is RNA. So DNA is a double strand 
and RNA is a single-stranded molecule. So this table is trying to uh, tell you guys that, for example, this is uh, this is this is this is DNA, right? And we have different bases on it. For example, we have A, we have T, we have C, G, C, T, A. So what happens is that this is coded into amino acids. Okay, so three of them, so A, T, C, they will code for one amino acid. And these three, G, C, and T, they will code for another amino acid. So in the combination of three, they make one amino acid, okay? So let me sh uh, share the slides so that you guys, you guys can understand this concept. Okay, so now, so, DNA to mRNA and proteins, five more minutes. So this is the DNA molecule. It, it, is, it is just like a ladder that, that, you, that you need to climb. When, whenever you're trying to climb upstairs, you use a ladder. So it looks like a ladder. So this is a double-stranded molecule and it, it splits up, okay? So this, this changes into uh, a single-stranded molecule and it is called mRNA, messenger RNA. And an enzyme comes and uh, it, you see DNA, uh, RNA polymerase, ASE. So this is an enzyme. So the enzyme will do the work and it will convert it into messenger RNA. And then the ribosome, this is another uh, part of the cell. It will read, it will read the sequence on this a single strand of RNA, and it will make it into an amino acid proteins, okay? So you can see here that uh, this is UAC. So UAC means that, okay, we have to put a methionine here. So this will, this will be brought by the transfer RNA. And again, we have AAA, adenine, adenine, and adenine. So this will, this will code for lysine, okay? So methionine will be formed, lysine will be formed, and so on. And here you will have this chain, okay? Amino acid chain. And this is how a protein is formed from uh, the, the DNA. DNA changes into messenger RNA, and then the code is, record, uh, is decoded and read by ribosomes, and it leads to a protein, okay? And uh, just uh, one more minute. Uh, these, the, the, the DNA is very, very interesting, and uh, just two days ago, uh, scientists at the Harvard University, uh, they fixed a DNA. So what are you seeing here? These are two rats. Which of them is uh, older and which of them is younger? Final slide, last slide. Anyone? Can you see which of the two rats is a younger and which one is old? I think that the, um, bl the black is the older. The black one is the older. The black one is younger. Like when, when people get old, they get white hair. So you can see this white hair. Oh, I think that the uh, color get more harder with the years. You know, that's that's okay. Well try, well try, Matthew. So I'm sorry. So so this one is old because it has uh white hair and this one has black hair and, th and this right is young. 
what what if i tell you these two are twins i have a surprise for you these two rats were born at the same time and both of these two two rats are of the same age what happened so the scientists fixed the dna of this rat and they turned it back to young young age okay so the so this this rat was like this rat few days ago and they repaired the dna of this rat and and made it younger okay so by fixing the dna you can uh, make uh, like animals uh, younger as well and disease free so this is the latest research that came uh, the two two days ago i hope is it is interesting to you so dna are very very important molecules so now let us summarize what we learned today enzymes are biological catalysts made up of proteins their name ends in ase they work by lowering the activation energy uh, of the reaction uh, then we uh, saw the transport the cellular transport cell uses di diffusion osmosis active transport and bulk transport for transporting nutrients and waste through the cell then we learned that nucleotides form the backbone of dna and rna molecules that contain nitrogenous bases always remember g pairs with c and t pairs with a and at the end uh, we saw that dna the genes make messenger rna that makes proteins in a process called translation so uh, thank you very much that was all from my side for today's lecture so uh, if you do not have any questions so we will uh, this would this would be the end of the class it's clear guys the class going to be closed right now everything is clear yeah oh, everything is clear for me okay very good guys excellent class i learned a con Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for your participation. Um, be present for the next class, okay? Yes. Okay, guys. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful day, Anand. Bye bye. Bye.